Welcome back to Rehab Now with consultant physiatrist and rehabilitation medical doctor, Dr. Paula Dawson. And I'm your host, Alicia Taylor. Hi, Doc. Hi, Alicia. How are you? I am so excited. Excited. Are you? I am very excited. You Why know, are you excited? Because champs, champs, don't you know? It don't. But I'm very excited. <laughs> For the people around the area. The road free up. Man, so Rehab Now is brought to you by the Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean, yes. Winchester MRI, Immune Active Dank, and Almighty Studios. Yes, ma'am. Doc, I'm really excited about this program. You know Why? Tell me why. Yeah, man. Because Champs was last week. Mm -hmm. But then I remember that you have a story for tell me. Oh, my word. You know, I was hoping that you'd forget. No, I'm not forget that. <laughs> You're going to tell me a story about the Usain Bolt? I I'm shall. I'm not going to forget that. I shall. I'm I not going to. Yes. I'm going to tell you. I'm yeah, going to tell you about sports medicine. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, yes, so the yes. biggest high school sporting event was last weekend. Yes. And we saw quite a few athletes who had to be, how do you say, um, assisted off the field and so we're putting it yes yeah, and yeah. so this week we're going to be talking about sports medicine yes ma'am and i want to remind everybody that you can contact us at rehab institute caribbean dr paula dawson alisa taylor music and that's a, that's for instagram yeah. for facebook it's rehabilitation institute of the caribbean and our website is rehab caribbean dot com mm -hmm. no dr dawson she's a physical medicine and rehabilitation doctor but what a lot of people don't know is that she did a fellowship in sports medicine. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, man. Put some respect on her name. Oh, wow. So she's actually an expert <laughs> oh, wow. on today's topic. You put me under pressure, my girl. No pressure, no pressure at all, Doc. All right. So so what is what is sports medicine? Enlighten I my doctor. I love doctors. sports medicine. All right, so sports medicine, a lot of people... All right, so sports medicine, again, is a medicine that's a team approach. Mm -hmm. All right? And so sports medicine is study of the musculoskeletal muscles, bones, tendon, and... The sports around it, the biomechanics. So now when we talk about sports medicine, Jamaicans tend to think track and field. That's what I think. Football. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, there's dance. There's aerobics, yes. There's swimming. So it's not it's not necessarily people who play sports. Right. It's not necessarily people who play sport. And mm. so you have gymnastics, which mm. is a sport, by the way. You yes. have people that might be throwing the archery, you know. Okay. Uh, but so those people can get some injury as well. But in... In our setting now, you know, because champs was last week, we tend to focus a lot on track and field. Not that we're saying anything about football, because, you know, I'm one of the doctors for JFF, Jamaica Football Federation. Not to everything, man. How do you do it? <laughs> <That> bread. All right. <laughs> and so sports medicine is that medicine that, that deals with athletes, but not only athletes, mm -hmm. because we also deal with weekend warriors, people who play sports, people who are... Uh, you know, play football recreationally on the yeah, weekend. People yeah. who swim, they can get, you know, rotator cuff shoulder problems. So sports medicine is one, treating injuries that are related to sports. Two, preventing injuries mm. and also rehabilitation. Okay. Yes. Uh, excellent. Yes. All right. So what exactly uh, does the sports medicine do. I don't know if that question makes any sense. All right. So, all right. So, on the sports medicine team, right? Mm -hmm. So, so sports medicine doctor, mm -hmm. uh, which would be me, mm -hmm. is someone who is a medical doctor that deals with the team. For example, you, you have different roles, right? So, when I work at a rehabilitation institute of the Caribbean, I treat a lot of the high schools, mm -hmm. a lot of the clubs, the professional clubs. The a lot of the university athletes will come to me right across the board. They may come in with one of the most common injury is hamstring strain. You mm. strain your hamstring, you tear your hamstring, knee pain, patella femoral syndrome, ankle pain, or foot pain, plantar fasciitis. So you get a lot of injuries. So okay, so when you're so I get that at right. the rehab institute, but when you're on the road mm -hmm. and um, let's say for example you're at champs, yes, and there's an injury, yes, hamstring, yes, I don't know, right. How how does the sports medicine doctor assist in that moment? I love that question because that's where I was going. So I work at the Rehab Institute of the Caribbean. So mm -hmm. I treat people throughout the season in their mm -hmm. preparation. Right. Then you have a sports medicine doctor who will be at the event. Because right. you always see, you know, when people are playing a football and someone goes on, you see the doctor runs on uh -huh. with a bag. So you have mm -hmm. the um, on-the-field sports medicine doctor. No, there's a group of doctors that you don't see at Champs. They were downstairs... Ministry of Health brings together a team of doctors that actually, they treat the athletes. So when the athletes go off from 
the field yeah. and on a stretcher or in a wheelchair, they go mm-hmm. on the ground, right on the grandstand, and you have an amazing set of doctors under there and they treat the athletes for whatever it is, dehydration, injury to the muscles. So they try to stabilize them because that's not the final treatment. Right, because I was wondering, you know, how much help they can really give the athlete. Let's say it's like really extreme. Right, so remember, you know, in on the field at that point is primarily to stabilize the athletes and to assess one, mm. if the athlete can continue. That's important. Mm-hmm. Because what we tend to, what we want to do is to protect the athlete. When someone has an injury, you don't want to bring them back, push them, and you can have an injury that is irreversible and it ends their career. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very cautious as a sports medicine doctor, and the coaches that work with me know that, you know, Dr. Dawson that way. Instead of the athlete, um, if the athlete's not ready, I'm very, very cautious mm-hmm. with my athlete. And so you have those, you, that's the two main set of doctors. The one ones that are the preventive and the ones that are on the field. You also have those that travel with the team. <laughs> so I traveled with, I used to travel, or I still do travel with uh, J3A's team when we were going to world championships. And okay, so there's <laughs> there's a story. Great. So this is a story time now. I don't know. You ready for the story? Me and Lee ready for the story a long time. All right. So, so we alluded to a story in in twenty in when we we're in Germany. That's two thousand nine when you say and broke all the records. So I was yeah. a team doctor when we went to Germany, and usually at the end, the, your one hundred meters run the last race usually, and we're down underneath the testing pool. We're there until like midnight. So you know, you say in. Uh, when we're leaving and going back to the hotel, you know, we were with the driver and his manager. And uh, we were just driving. It was dark, you know. There's nothing. There's a stoplight, the road <laughs> empty. And there's a guy on a bicycle and he's riding. And this is in Germany, right? And then you say to the guy, Jamaica, because the guy had a Jamaica flag on his back. Okay, so you say okay. to Jamaica. And the guy said, is that you saying, boat? <laughs> and then you say, yeah, man, here, you got to give me something. No one's going to believe me. And he <laughs> says, but oh, you're British so in a Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what you're saying, dude? He took off his shirt and gave it to the guy. Oh, the guy wrote off, oh, wow. this is the best day of my life. <laughs> no one's <laughs> going to believe me. And so oh, and that, that speaks to you saying both how incredible, personable he that is. That is so sweet. It is <laughs> sweet. And then the other story, though, the 200 meter now, at the night of the 200 meter now, by now, the hype. You know, everybody looking for you saying both and yeah. the paparazzi, they're following him. And so when we leave in the stadium now, midnight, so the paparazzi were trying to follow us. So here the driver, don't worry. I drive for Madonna. Oh, all right. So then start, drive, hear me, stop, stop, remember <laughs> Lady Diana. Here you're saying, Daco is a boomy. And so the, the driver just drop, turn right, turn left, in pack, in, back into a parking no, spot. No, like a real know. movie scene. I used to the paparazzi them, <laughs> zoom, 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 Are zoom, pass. Serious? Yeah, man. Oh, wow. Uh, after he back into the parking lot, he drove off, I drove oh, to the Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was fun. Man. But I was, you know, I was like, remember Lady Diana. That that is such a good story. But when you travel with a team, it is so much fun and it is so much work. So as a so as a sports medicine, what Mm -hmm. you call it? So you're a sports medicine doctor. I am. Okay, great. So when you're there, you're treating the entire team, or you're just there for individuals. No, well, we are a team of sports medicine specialists. Okay. And so you have sports medicine doctor. When I was in Qatar, I was the only doctor, medical doctor. But then we have physical therapists, Mm -hmm. very important massage therapists Mm -hmm. as well. So that's the sports medicine sort of rehab team. And so, you know, when we go, you know, we treat, literally, we have our our medical bay. (laughs) We treat athletes probably all day long because you have to, you know, treat um, injuries that they have come with or injuries that are coming. Or sometimes you just need a massage or a flush out. And remember, you know, as as a sports medicine doctor, when you're traveling with the team, you still have regular stuff like cough and cold and cramps and headache mm. and this kind of stuff. So you're still doing like a general practitioner type of work. So you have to manage people who might have a cough, respiratory, you know, people get virus and cough and cold when you travel. So you still do that part of medicine. But you still do the musculoskeletal part, you know, the biomechanics. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that what I love about sports medicine is, I, I think in my la- in the last episode, we spoke about the coaches. Mm. We have some wicked coaches in Jamaica. <laughs> big up the coaches in Jamaica. Big I up all co- of the coaches. I am not really known about. Big up on us. I'm not going to call any cover. I'm not going to forget one and get in trouble. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we have to big up all of them. But the, I, no, man. Let me tell you. When I was in Chicago, we used to have a physiology lab for sports medicine, right? Mm. And in the physiology lab, what they'll do is... All right, so when you're training, they want you to peak at the right time 
so you can compete. So what does peak mean? Yeah. Your most efficient one, muscle, mm -hmm. strength, and just biomechanics as well as your breathing. Mm -hmm. So you don't change over. All right, so when you're when when you when you when your peak is when you're fittest. Okay. No, but you can peak and then you lose peak. If you, you so you don't stay peak for a long time. Okay, okay. And so in when I was in Chicago, they they have them in the lab and they have this like an oxygen thing in the mouth and they're reading whole heap of things on the computer to determine how hard to push them. Oh. You know, in Jamaica, what we do, our coach has what I call the gut. Um, they are so amazing. Like I remember I was on at UA once watching, you know, Glenn Mills and then I used to go over MVP and I watched Stephen Francis and they used to just know when the athletes went to back off. Went to, I said, you need to go harder oh just my. based on, I them believe, just how that. They, that was they breathe. Yeah, man. Mm. And they know exactly what program to have the athletes on. So they peak at the right time. My God. Yeah, man. They, they're just amazing. And so, you know, that kind of physiological assessment is one and, and the skill that we have in Jamaica from our coaches you know, very, very important. A, a group of people that I think are not given enough recognition are the massage therapists. The physical, ther physical therapists are important, you know, we soon get to I them. I was going to ask about them. But you see the massage therapist, you see um, flexibility, you know, you always get the nuts in the muscles mm -hmm. and our massage therapists, they're trained at GC Foster, big up my friend, Maurice Wilson, <laughs> who's coach. I heard he was a head boy. Yesterday I was listening on, um, uh, not yesterday, last week I was listening on Champs and he was talking about how Maurice Wilson used to be the head boy of some school, so in, in Bright too. All right. Yeah, man. And so <laughs> Maurice at, at GC Foster, they have an amazing program. So if you want to get into sports medicine, you want to do massage therapy, um, GC Foster, great That's school. The and then you now the physical therapist, University of the West Indies has a physical therapy school. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Actually, I did. Justine trained. Justine and, and all the other therapists that come here, they train at the rehabilitation. No, at University, University of, of the West. Yes, yes, yes. Physical you therapy know school. That. Yes. All right, good. So, very, very interesting stuff we have. But when we come back from the break, yes. I want to talk about return to play. Good, good thing. Yeah, so stay with us. Stay with us. Welcome back to Rehab Now, brought to you by the Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean, providing medical care for function and performance in association with Winchester MRI, Jamaica's first choice for MR imaging, yes. immune active DENC, yes. a combination of key active ingredients designed to boost the body's natural defense yes. and almighty studios, a recording studio where we create worship music to praise, to worship and to serve. Hallelujah. And if you are just joining us, we are talking about sports medicine. Yes. Season of champs already passed. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to ask a question, Doc. I know that the sports medicine doctor. Yes. You're also trained to deal with non-muscular skeletal issues, you know, such as concussions and stuff like that. That's oh, right. Yes. So I like that. So. <laughs> How do you determine when an athlete is ready to return to play after them have certain acute or chronic right. um, illnesses? So concussion. So for those mm -hmm. of you who don't, don't know what concussion is, a concussion is a head injury mm -hmm. that is transient without any organic damage, meaning there is no brain tissue damage okay. that you can see on an MRI. However, the trauma or the, the tackle or whatever it is, you're running, you're playing football and you hit up in a goal, co goal post or two people went ahead of ball and they mm. knocked the head together mm. and they knock out. So you're dazed for a little bit, right? So concussion is where you kind of temporary loss of consciousness without any permanent brain damage. Okay, good. And that is in quotation because if you had watched the movie Concussion, yeah. there's a guy, O'Malley, oh, I'm glad you reminded me. There's a guy, a <laughs> uh, pathologist, I can't remember where he was from. He's an African. He worked in America. I actually met him. 
he is the person who Will Smith played in the movie. Yes, Concussion, I watched right? that movie. And I actually, actually met the original guy in, really? as a conference. Yeah, really, really nice guy who noticed that boxers, no, not boxers, it was NFL players. Yes. Right, and so, you know, in the movie, it says that, I you know, there the are movie. some organic changes in the brain that you can only see at autopsy. Right, which is after the person dies, but you can't see it on MRI. Wow. And so usually it's believed that there's no injury. You know, but that's, that's a different situation. So we're just talking about concussion. But if you haven't watched the movie, watch it. Concussion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Will Smith. You won't get a slam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You actually concussion is punching. <laughs> okay, how do I get out of this? Anyway, so concussion return <laughs> to play, right? And so there is a classification. There is all right. So when you get knocked out, we, there are certain questions we ask you mm-hmm. on the field of play. Okay. All right. And when you come to the doctor, there are certain questions. One we ask you, and two examination. For example, fatigue, mm. headache memory, especially headache on exertion. And so, and it also depends on how long you will lose consciousness for. And so we should do a topic on concussion because it's yeah, a big topic I really on know. I how long know. you lose consciousness yeah. and what are, what are the symptoms. Another thing with concussion, recurrent concussion can lead to aggression. Personality changes, yes. And that's so when we can, when we do concussion, we'll, we'll expect. And concussion is every time you hit your head. Like concussion. You, hit, you, have to you, hit, can, you have to hit the head. You have to hit your head and be dazed. Yeah. Or have loss of consciousness. Because okay. people hit their head every time. And so what happens in concussion? So in the brain, the brain is in fluid. And when you get, when you're moving mm-hmm. or something hits you, the brain moves around in the brain and it hits up on the inside of the skull. Mm. And it gets shaken up and it can get bruising mm. but the, bru- the thing with concussion is not shown on MRI it's a clinical syndrome meaning symptoms rather than something you see changes mm. on an MRI mm. alright and so that's that's concussion and so return to play will be determined by one how long you lose consciousness how many concussions you had and mm. your symptoms so if you have like persistent headache you can't go back to play so that's another really? thing. So so we, we do this in association with the neurosurgeons and the neurologists. So it's a team approach to deciding when you return to a plane. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, but, you know, because Champs was last week, you know, I, you know, usually the injuries that you see is in track and field mm-hmm. will be more musculoskeletal. Than, okay. Yeah, and joints like hip, ankle, um, knees, hamstring. All right. So let's talk about the hamstring then. Yeah. You ever, you ever pull your hamstring in? I don't even know where my hamstring is, to tell you the truth. It's yeah. bad. That's bad. I don't even know where my hamstring is. I'm not, ha- no shame in the game. Okay, your hamstring is your thigh muscle, the back one. I don't even know it was thigh. I think an ankle. Oh, because it's a hung hamstring. Yeah. <laughs> no. the, the muscle name here confused no. me, though. So, yeah, hamstring. Suppose I tell you the real hamstring names. Seventeen. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm straight. Semi tendinosis, semi memonosis, memonosis. Axial and axial. I will tell you. All right. So the hamstring is that muscle which in the thigh, the back of your thigh. The back of the thigh. It starts okay. at your your sits bone. So when you're sitting down, there's a bone that you're sitting on, mm-hmm. right? So it starts from that, mm-hmm. and it goes past your knee, and it kind of inserts just in front of your knee. So it it extends or bends your knee, and it kind of helps in extending your hip. Extend mm-hmm. your hip. And so when an athlete is running, what happens sometimes is the hamstring uh, can be stretched too much and you can get a tear. Right? Mm-hmm. And and we call that a strain as opposed to a sprain. You sprain a ligament, mm-hmm. which a ligament connects bone to bone, mm-hmm. and you strain a muscle. Okay. Strain a muscle. And sprain your ankle. You sprain your ankle. Right? Okay. Sprain. Right. And so you have different degrees of, 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 of hamstring and injury. And so I have a thing where I love to ask a history. When you're running, one, did you go up in the air? It's the, I call it the dust thing. If you go up in the air, when you get the hamstring and then go down to the ground, for me, it's usually greater than... So you have grade one, grade two, grade three. So if you go up in the air and come down, for me, that's either a two or a three. Explain to me, go up into the air. You know, like when you run, I feel the hamstring and you see them trying to go, woo, like yeah, they go yeah, up yeah, in yeah. the pain oh, and then they go okay. down. Right, because that's a lot of pain. And mm-hmm. so you have grade one, grade two, grade three. You have another classification that deals with the, 
what they call Maya tendinous junction, which is where the muscle meets a tendon, which I think Usain had when he was in South, mm. um, in Brazil, when he had Brazil, when he had that injury. But let's do the basic one, grade one, grade two, grade, grade three. three. Okay. Grade one is a mild strain, mm -hmm. where only some of the muscle fibers are torn. Grade two is a partial tear, and grade three is where the muscle tear completely. Mm. You know, and I've had athletes where you actually have a complete tear in the muscle, and, and the orthopedic surgeon, we have some amazing orthopedic surgeons, you, you, they actually can go back in and suture, I'll use that word instead of stitch, <laughs> suture the muscles back together, and they can grow back together. Yeah, so if the muscles are separated, you have, sometimes you have to fix them. With, with, with like needle and thread? It's called a suture. Okay. It looks like a needle, though, but it kind of curves. Okay. And it, the thread is kind of like suture, suture. Uh, so they must stitch you. So then the suture. And so yeah. you can get recovery. So people always ask, how long do I need after an injury? So if you have like a grade one, one to three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And a grade two, which is a more partial muscular tear, it's like four to eight weeks before you get back. Four and when you have a grade three, three, which is a severe tear or what we call an avulsion. What's an avulsion? Tell me. Where the muscle pop off from the bone. The muscle... Or so the so an avulsion is where the muscle actually pull away from the bone, and that can happen. And so, for example, the, an avulsion of the hamstring, for example, is where the hamstring pull off of the the ischial tuberosity is where your sixth bone is. But a good thing is medicine is amazing. Mm. Sports medicine, the team of doctors, the orthopedic surgeons, yeah, they can go in and fix it. Thank, great. How you can that that sound terrible? How yes. you fix the how you fix the the muscle are tear off of the bone. God. How do you fix that? They suture it back to the bone. A staple. Then you staple it What do you mean like staple? Where you, have, like, where you staple people together like staple? You ever see some patients with head injury and you see staple on their head? Oh my God. I have. Yeah, I've staples. seen that in like Frankenstein movies. No. <laughs> that, that is the image. <laughs> that is the image I'm having. No. So they no, staple them. No, no, no. All right. So they're just sutures. So they, they they reattach with their special orthopedic surgical technique. We have some boss orthopedic surgeons mm. in Jamaica. Trained at the University of the West Indies. <laughs> Big up you, Christopher Rose, the, you know, Sir John Golding was a, one of the orthopedic surgeons in Jamaica. Yes. Yeah, man, he's the first orthopedic surgeon. And he kind of started the department, and then Chris Rose, and then I'm Dr. Vaughn, and then you have the younger ones mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but so them stitch them head, stitch it together. S let's say staple. Stuture. Suture. Stuture. Suture. St suture. suture. <laughs> All right, great. So, All right. So talk to, me, talk to me a little bit about the importance or the role of supplements in all um, of this. So supplements. So, all right. So a lot of athletes will come to me and say, Doc, can I take supplements? Mm -hmm. I My first thing is... No. Mm. You know why? Because you don't know what is in supplements. Okay. There are some supplements that can be taken that do not have in anything that is on the world anti-doping list, the WADA, WADA. list, okay. right? And so the University of the West Indies, again, teaches <laughs> a course, a WADA course, Dr. Irvin, Rita Irvin, and I'm one of the lecturers for the um, anti-doping, the WADA course. And they have a pro prohibited list, which is updated every January. And that's the World Anti-Doping Agencies. And supplements, uh, some supplements will have in stimulants. There are certain things that you should not take. Like, for example, as you just said, I have a cold, can I take antihistamine? Yes, but not all of them, because some antihistamine will have in a stimulant. It's rough on the athletes, though. Yeah, yeah. man. You see, like, panel, like um, one of those multi-symptoms, uh, the non drowsy one, I remember I was playing football once and I had a cold. And trust me, stimulants work. I didn't know I was doping, right? So I was the captain for the UE team, right? And I had a fever. I was sick like a dog. And we were playing, at, I think it was, I don't know, Maxfield or somewhere. And I took panel multi symptoms and I felt so good. Mm -hmm. I ran for 90 minutes with fever. Never. Felt tired. And so I know stimulants work. Mm. Right? So, you know, sometimes when you take a, a multi-symptom, you kind of might feel drowsy. drowsy. I mean, it, it cleared up uh, my my runny nose. I, I, I still had the fever. Mm -hmm. And so supplements are very good. So um, we have, because if you're not competing, immune immune active um, Denk Pharma will have a, a host of uh, supplements that you can take if you're not competing. Mm -hmm. Right? And so if you're just a weekend warrior... Go get your um, immune active from Denk, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so I always tell my athletes, I am not recommending any supplements at all because you don't know 
another thing with supplements is that companies that are, are that make supplements they don't have the rigorous uh, we call it monitoring like pharmaceutical medication to make sure it's pure. Mm. And so they may say it has in one thing, but they may put a little stimulant in there for it to compete with another drug. So you might feel a little pep. Mm. And so you don't know that. So you just have to be very careful. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention when I talk about the, the hamstring tear is that you, you won't know the degree of the tear unless you do an MRI. Oh, Okay. And where you did the MRI. Yeah, man, Winchester MRI, there's no other place. There's Winchester no other place to MRI. do MRIs. Mm. And so the radiologists, they're the ones who will determine the degree of the tear. I didn't mean to go back, but... No, that's you fine. Have that's to, fine. We need you, to know. You can't know what tear it is unless you do an MRI. Mm. And the MRI is what's going to show you. So if you have an injury, whether it's ankle injury, knee injury, foot injury... MRI, Winchester MRI. Mm. And to get back to the supplements, you know, uh, uh, there are different, different supplements, supplements in addition to the immune active. You have calcity dank, you have magnesium dank, you have mm-hmm. a lot of uh, supplements that you can take. And those things are safe. And those things are safe because anything that is usually on the pharmaceutical market has gone through its, its tests, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But just to be clear, Athletes are in a different category where your body need to be clean. There's something called the strict liability clause in world anti-doping. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? If you don't intend to dope, but you put something in your body by mistake, it's your responsibility. They don't want to hear. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. No excuse. So it's called strict liability clause of an athlete. So I tell my, I teach my athletes, be very no matter, don't be careful what you rub on your body during so competition. So the things that you rub on your body as well? Some things can be absorbed, yes. In, t- uh, uh, in terms, skin. Mm. can be absorbed into the skin, yeah. So you have to be mm. very, very careful. If you're careful kind of lotion you put on your body. Yeah. Is it that extreme? It's not the lotion per se. For example, people will have uh, eczema and some of the eczema will have in some steroids oh. or people might need um, some steroid topical may have in different types of steroid that can absorb in the body. No, they just, just in January, reviewed the steroid use and they have something called a washout period where some steroids can be used in competition, mm. right? And some steroids can be used out of competition, but you mm. need a washout period, meaning you have to take it like six months ahead, three months ahead, so yeah, it can be so washed out of the your body. System, so, yeah. that is... so you don't have any advantage. That's what World anti doping is all about. Mm. Sports medicine. Thank you so much. Love sports, sports medicine. medicine. Yes. All right. Thank you, Doc. So that's all the time that we have to discuss our sports medicine. I just want to thank all of uh, the studio engineers yes. and our producers. <laughs> thank you so much, Renee, Stacy, and Jeff. Thank yes. you so very much. Thank you for all the persons that have been listening. Yes. Um, Power 106, just want to remind you of our sponsors. That's the Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean, Winchester MRI, Immune Active Dink, and Almighty Studios. We will see you all next week. Same time, same place. God bless. Bye.